Hi everyone, you should have watched part 1 and part 2 of my videos by now. Um, part 1 is about budgeting your income and part 2 is about setting up this budget that I like to use called Aspire Budget. In this part 3, I want to show you how to actually use this on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, or else, you know, it, it's a white elephant. You need to be using this, you need to be logging your transactions, you need to be transferring your categories whenever you get paid. Uh, and this also helps you to adjust your budget, for example. There are two ways to access a Google Sheet, of course. The first one would be via your laptop, which is I'm using now. So I'm showing you how to do this on a laptop. At the same time, you can also use your phone. So get into Sheets, you download the Sheets app, and you'll be able to actually access your budget uh, via that route. That will help you make changes or update your budget on a day-to-day -day basis. So for example, when I'm out buying a coffee, I want to log that immediately. I will actually log it into my budget so I can see my uh, dashboard categories, what's available, updated uh, real time. So that's what you would like to do. That's what you should be doing when you're out. Uh, but there are some things that I prefer to do at home. For example, when I get paid and I need to budget out my income, uh, th that's when I use a laptop. So without further ado, let's start with getting paid. So for example, if I do get paid on the first of every month or the last day of every month, let's go with last day, let's go with um, 31st of January, let's say it's $5,000 inflow and this would be salary. So I think um, we actually plotted out $4,000 because of CPF. So we did budget it all out here. So we do get a take home pay of three nine nine eight. So when you actually get your salary in, you should be checking your bank statement to see exactly how much you get. Because sometimes, you know, you get a bonus or sometimes you, you get deductions. You know, this is where you slowly find out what your actual salary is. And that's when you maybe fix your categories or fix how you want to use it. But in this case, we get 3998 salary. And we're going to um, put it into our OCBC account. So this is, again, um, transactions are what's actually taking place. So your salary, if it's credited to an OCBC bank account, that's where you select this. If it's a UOB, select UOB. In this case, we're going to assume that you're getting your bank account um, here. And this goes to salary. Uh, one thing I forgot to show you in the previous one is that um, this is a customization I do. Why do I use salary? So here, I'm going to change it to salary. I'm going to change this to white so we can actually see it. And I'm going to click equals to here. And I'm going to dashboard and selecting the salary amount here, which is what's available. Because what we want is our salary to be zero, the availability to be zero. So this just makes it easier for me to see. Um, typically, before I did this, I was using avail available to budget, meaning uh, I would credit that amount into available to budget. Uh, in our transactions, meaning here, available to budget. Problem with that is that it doesn't show up in the reports here. And that's why I, I want to actually use um, salary here. Salary can be used in reports. So now that we do have 3998 in our salaries, let's budget it out. So this is the 31st of January. Let's actually look at our categories. $500 for parents allowance. So salary and then parents allowance. And then we continue on king everything in so the only time when you really need to do this afresh is when you're first is when you're first using this budget after subsequently what i do is i will just copy and paste that whole chunk uh, so i can show that to you later after king all your categories here making sure that it matches with what you have budgeted um you should reach a zero meaning all the money you have from your salary has been appropriately funneled into the correct envelopes or the correct categories and in future when you get your salary all you have to do is copy and paste this Copy and paste this downwards, and you're done. You know what I mean for your next salary. Um, if there's any extra, you can you can actually add it to some some fun money or to add it to your investments if you want. Um, you know, it is pretty free and easy. It's really up to you. If you get a little less, you can remove things from your food or fun money. Depends on how you want to handle it. So. On, but on a month-to-month -month basis, you would typically have this. So this is what you do. Just copy and paste it every time you get your salary. And make sure that you key it in as a transaction because you're getting it. Make sure that you turn your status to a tick to recognize that it's actually been done. Okay, so that's the first one. What happens when you actually get paid? So when you go to your dashboard, now you can see everything has increased because you got paid. Um, and now you have a lot of money in all these envelopes. This is because I set this up with uh, a starting balance and we didn't spend much money between um, these two, two dates. But anyway, let's just move forward and uh, ignore that. The next thing I wanted to cover is um, the transfer of money. So this includes like when you're withdrawing money. So when I'm out, I'll typically keep these two transactions in 
to record a withdrawal. So I'm doing it on computer, but make sure. But you should know that you can actually be doing this on your your phone as you're you're on the go, right? So on the phone, you might want to key in this date, the exact date, and let's say I withdraw two hundred dollars cash for my account from uh, OCBC. So I would do this. I will select account transfer, and this will come from OCBC bank account because two hundred dollars came from OCBC bank account, and then two hundred dollars in cash. So um, this would be my wallet. So this is what happens when I withdraw money uh, into into a cash. You will key in your outflow from whichever account, and you'll key in an inflow to whatever account with account transfer. So this really happens again. Um, for example, when you pay a credit card account, let's say you know we already have some credit card uh, transactions here, two hundred fifty. Let's say the bill comes up and it's two hundred fifty. Um, I would typically again pay that two hundred fifty. So it'll be two hundred fifty. I'll use my OCBC account to pay for the um, what account is that? Uh, for the OCBC 360, so that's perfect. OCBC 360. So outflow from the bank account and an inflow into your OCBC card. Account transfer, account transfer, and you can see that the OCBC bank account has gone down, and then you can see that your OCBC card goes back to zero. That's because you have paid your bill. Okay, moving forwards, the next most common thing that's going to happen to you is spending money. This is a quite a duh situation. So, for example, on that day, um, on the on the first of February, I decided to go for, out to eat. So I, I took, bought some Thai fun. Thai fun came up to five dollars. All I have to do is choose the correct category and choose the correct um account. So in that case, if I'm using cash, it would be a wallet. Later on, at that night, you know, I would go on a date. I spent about $15 on food in a restaurant. So it would again be food. And then I use my OCBC 360 to pay for it. So it would be like this, right? It would just be three, uh, OCBC 360. Let's say um, on the next day, I go on another date. And this was an expensive dinner. And I paid first, right? Food. And I use my OCBC 360 account. Later on, because we are going Dutch, my date pays me back for half the amount. This will become an inflow. Because, you know, I get transferred the money and this goes into my OCBC 360 account because it's tied to my pay now. So the, these are examples of what would happen uh, on a day-to-day -day basis when you actually spend money. Um, let's say you go to Shopee and you decide to spend another $20 on some port mart or something. This would be spending money uh, or fun money in this case, fun money. And I would be using my OCBC 360 as well. So again do this tick uh, you can do this all at one shot later on because this all affects your balance so here you can go to like ocbc account ocbc 360 you can see actually what happens account transfer is like a payment uh, right we paid this 250 to 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 pay for our bill these are the new expenditures oh this is wrong so like 25 this 25 dollars because go half is not 360 is actually the ocbc bank account because that's pay now then you can enter into your memo so you remember what actually happened so this is how you, you typically do your spending money. Uh, another thing, for example, if you do give your parents money every start of the month, so this, uh, whoops, for the start of the month, we will just do that $500 parents allowance. And this comes from our OCBC bank account because we just transfer them the money. And then, you know, that's done. So when you are keying in a transaction, just make sure you key in the correct amount in the outflow. Make sure you choose the correct category depend on what, depending on what you're spending on and choose the correct account. So the account balances will all update. You can see actually what happens. And you can compare this to your bank account statement uh, at the end of the month or whenever you decide to check. So we did some examples about going paying your, your bill. Um, I just want to make sure that here, I just want to mention that you should actually be checking your balances, like I said. So you, what you do is you go to your credit card bill here and you look at the, you download the PDF version of the statement or just look at the statement from your bank account and then you compare one by one, just making sure that everything is correct. Because there are cases where transactions are wrong. There's been a lot of fraud cases or scam cases where people manage to scan your, your, uh, get your credit card information and spend on your behalf, that's when you actually can raise it because you have recorded it here, you know exactly what you have spent. If there's a transaction that you don't recognize, you should be telling your bank about that so they can investigate further and help you uh, fight on those charges. So that, that's one of the useful things about having this, um, this budget here. Sorry, I know we're going all over the place, but let's say, right, let's say, uh, in you, let's say in your bank account statement, you do see a extra $10 on food 
here in the OCBC 360 and after some reflection you think yeah I, I'm pretty sure I went for that meal it seems like I haven't gone for that meal I just forgot to log in all you do is key in the date that was in the uh, in the transaction for example if it was the um, if it was the 20th of of January you just key in just key in the ten dollars food like you remember what you spent on right because it's clearly on the um, bank statement you know which restaurant you went to then you just key that in and that's one thing that you have done so to make sure that your actual balance matches up with your bank statement uh, let's say you go far back and somehow you dig and dig and dig and you cannot find any kind of um reason why the balance is different and if it's less than ten dollars usually i don't care usually i just key in a reconciliation amount let's say i was checking on the 28th of february and i realized that um yeah i have about eight dollars eight fifty difference and my balance is less by 850 all i do is just 850 i decide on a on one of these usually i take out from my trips because you know this is really big fun money and i just key it into where the bank statement is different so once i do that i what my purpose is is to make sure that the balance here matches up with my actual balance in my bank account so that things can be reconciled e easily and because i didn't really spend it on trips here i'll write reconciliation just just for the sake of it lah. yeah so just wanted to let you know this is how i actually make sure that our balances uh, match and even when they don't match i make it match manually like this or i do it by actually finding the missing transaction and key it in or if that transaction shouldn't be there i'll be calling the bank to make sure that you know they correct it and do some investigation of their own so make sure that you actually really always go to your balances here from your account and gen and then when the actual balance is different from your budget to your account uh, online what you have to do is really check through each statement each transaction until you find out what's going on okay this will really help you uncover some shady things so it could be sometimes um your bank has an overdraft limit uh that, that they want to charge you so they charge you a fall below fee of like 100 bucks and then if you just pay off your your bills or you don't even look at your balances and you don't know you just pay for it you you're not aware of you know all these extra charges if you do have a fall below fee you should still call like for example if you have 900 dollars for the whole month by accident just call the bank fight it fight against that and then you know figure out a way to to get your money back so this is how i handle my finances and this is what why i recommend you know using this budget and typing it in manually so you can actually have a very clear um view of what you intended to spend on and what you didn't Another transaction that I tend to do is investments, right? So that's a question that I always ask myself, like, should I keep my investments in my budget? Uh, in my case, right, because investments are long term, for example, interactive brokers, I'm buying shares that I probably will not sell for the next like five years unless there's a huge boom. Um, I will actually take it out. So I will count it as a outflow of money. So on the 28th of February, let's say I actually invested all 3000 from my interactive brokers, or if I do an automatic transfer to endowers, I will just take it as an outflow. I will not um, key in here into this budget. In some cases, uh, people people who use Aspire budget, they do use net worth reports and they key in here. I don't do that here. Um, stay tuned for another video about how I actually keep track of my net worth, but I don't want to keep any of this here. I don't want to keep here because for me, a budget should be about short term spending. I don't want to think about that. Why do I have money our cash account is because I do want to use this. This is actually my emergency fund and I'm keeping it in a cash account. It will be short term when I really need it. And that's why I do it here. Um, you can do whatever you want. I'm just giving you my principles. So I do want you to think about, you know, what you want to keep in this budget, how you want to handle it and how you don't want to handle it. So let's say you have had a tough month, right? You had a really tough, tough month. Somehow you have overspent on food. Let's say let's put in about five hundred dollars here let's say over overspend on food because you know life is tough you de you deserve to treat yourself a little bit more and you see okay that's not enough <laughs> uh, i think this budget is a bit too generous let's say we spent a lot on food and we have we are over by 110 dollars right what do you do here you can't take it back because you already spent the amount what you do is you see oh i have a lot of fun money left uh, maybe I shouldn't spend so much money on fun stuff. I should be transferring this from fun money to food. This is how you actually adjust your budget. So I'll come here, 28th of February. I'll be like, okay, I overspent. Fine, I screwed up. I'm going to just transfer $110 from one envelope to another, from one category to another category. 
so once that happen that that happens money a uh, food becomes zero and at least i know i can budget for the new salary if this is not enough i can always give myself more like if i have a few days left to to eat that i need to eat i will transfer a bit more from fund money it becomes forty dollars to at least have some money to spend and then this is when you reflect maybe in the future instead of budgeting um whatever amount on food like five hundred dollars on food i know that one month i spend more more on that i will have to consider changing these categories up i may want to consider giving myself six hundred dollars on food and and 150 for for fun spend so this is how you actually review a budget how you handle it how you mindfully spend your things and and adjust and make sure that you know you you're surviving you're thriving you're doing whatever you can to to make the best of the situation okay i'm sorry i, I don't know if i did this video justice i don't know if i made did this budget justice i just wanted to show you how i do it and i hope that um you know this encourages you to set up this budget and actually take control of your finances make sure that you know what you're spending on in your mind uh, is actually what you're spending on you don't want to be sabotaged by hidden expenses or hidden fees things that you you don't know about and this budget also helps you say no to certain things for example if you if your friends want to go to uss like two times in a month and you you don't have much fun money left you can safely tell them no i'm sorry i really can't afford it i can't re i really can't afford it this month because you are mindful about you know how much money you have left and you know how much money has gone to your investments Th these might be more important to you for for me it's more important that i invest my money then go to USS um, with my friends. Uh, yeah, a bit sad to say, um, but you do need to find company that actually appreciates you for you, uh, appreciates your own boundaries, uh, appreciate um, who you are. And I can go into that all day talking about that, but uh, maybe not in this video. Uh, anyway, just leave a like and subscribe. Let me know if this helped. And if you have any questions about this budget, how I use it and how you want to use it, just let me know. I'll be more than happy to, to discuss. Mm, thank you so much. Bye-bye.